All right, guys, welcome back to more Stellar Blade juiciness. Recently, Kim Hyung Tae, the director of Stellar Blade at Shift Up, sat down with Really Web and Famitsu to talk more about the game. We've got some more interesting details towards it. We're only about 20 days out of release, and personally, I am so excited. This is definitely going to be one of the better games for 2024. The demo has left me more impressed with this game than I thought I honestly would be. I am blown away that this is Shift Up's very first console title. Kim talks about some really exciting and interesting stuff to do with the game, but before we get into that, IGN recently got 15 minutes of exclusive gameplay to show off of a level known as Matrix, a subway system. There's nothing really new that we didn't already know about within this gameplay. It's just showing us more of the game. Again, giving us a really good example of just that sort of grim, wet, post-apocalyptic type uh, environment and atmosphere that Stellar Blade has. I think that Shift Up have absolutely nailed the world design aspect of this game. It's definitely a highlight for me so far, and I can't wait to see more areas. One thing this gameplay did show us, though, was ammo switching. We already have seen footage of the different kinds of ranged weapons, but essentially, they're not individual weapons that you have to equip. Uh, they're just different ammo types that are a part of the drone. So you can switch between any of the different types of ranged weapons weapons and ammo types on the fly as you unlock them. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the director's comments towards the combat system of the game. Now that we've all had the opportunity to be able to experience the combat system for ourselves, we now know what to expect. Stellar Blade isn't that traditional hack and slash action game like something like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry. It definitely leans more into the realm of something like a Souls-like, locking onto an enemy, dodging at the right time, identifying attack patterns, the game actively encouraging you to pull off perfect parries to access the stagger system. In the conversations that have been seen online, it seems as if some people weren't exactly expecting the Souls-like formula to be a part of this game's combat system. Because yeah, if you are playing on normal and you're overwhelmed by an enemy, you can die fairly quickly. This is what director Lee and Kim had to say about this. The action that Stellar Blade pursues is not one-sided attack and spectacular defeat of the opponent, no matter who they are. It was important to recognize what actions the enemy was taking and respond to them. That is, to feel that the monster and I were in harmony. However, as I mentioned earlier, it is not impossible to enjoy it like a hack and slash depending on character growth, skills, and gear settings. Lee mentions that the boss challenge in the demo may feel a little more difficult because it is like suddenly experiencing mid-level content. In reality, I think you will learn several systems one by one and find a playstyle that suits you without much trouble. There is a level of difficulty called story mode. Not only is enemy HP and damage adjusted, but an action assist function that supports pattern identification and avoidance is provided. It is recommended for gamers who find boss battles too difficult and want to enjoy the story mainly. So this is some pretty good reassurance here from the directors. For one, you can enjoy it like a typical hack and slash, depending on how you build Eve. And yes, that stalker boss fight, part of the boss challenge in the demo, is hard. Harder than anything that you experience in the main portion of the demo. But remembering that you've essentially skipped out all of the previous content leading up to that point of the game. Hence why there is such a large difficulty curve from the previous content of Stellar Blade you've just come from. I for one personally quite enjoy the Souls-like gameplay. While I definitely wasn't expecting Stellar Blade to be so soul heavy in the way of its combat system, even though we did know that Sekiro for one is one of the main inspiration points for this game's combat system. I think Stellar Blade meets this nice middle ground of typical hack and slash meets Souls-like combat. The challenge is most certainly there for anyone looking for it, but for people that do want an easier experience, that story mode option is there for you. I know that this is a common complaint towards uh, Souls game from, from software, that there are should be an easy mode for people that just want to be able to experience the atmosphere of these games as well as its narrative. So if you are a little bit deterred from what you experience with the combat system within the demo, then I would say don't be, because it seems as if as you progress through the game, you learn more about its systems, obviously more progression towards Eve and the different moves and attacks that you can pull off. There's also always story mode too for people that just don't like this kind of thing. We have a little bit more information here on DLC and patches. Kim mentioned if we accidentally missed something or there is something lacking, we will make up for it even after release. We will be working on a balanced patch to prevent inconveniences for those 
those who come in later and to make the game even more enjoyable for those who started playing first. The release of DLC has not yet been determined, but free updates such as additional costumes are being prepared. We would like to make it clear that Stellar Blade does not require any additional expenses that gamers are not aware of other than the cost of purchasing the game. The only exception is if you create a collaboration costume with another company's IP, that amount can be sold for a fee. Also, there is no new game plus in the released version, so please look forward to it being updated very soon. New game plus is always an appreciated thing, especially with these kinds of action games to be able to go back through the game again, but with all of your upgraded skills, gear and equipment and stuff. So it's great to know that new game plus will be getting added. Also collaboration costumes right here. This is an interesting little tidbit. It would be super cool to see, I don't know, maybe a 2B outfit for Eve. We do know that in the past shift up have worked with Square Enix to bring Nier Automata to Nikkei. And we also know that Yoko Taro, the director of Nier, is going to be enjoying Stellar Blade for when it comes out, so this is definitely something I could see happening. Now when we got the overview trailer for Stellar Blade during the State of Play in February, there were some interesting comments towards the character that was revealed known as Lily. Uh, basically, some people were saying that, oh my god, I shift up sexualizing a child here. Some pretty insane stuff, and honestly speaking, when I was first reacting to this footage, I was kind of like, okay, is, is this like a minor? <laughs> it's like, what, what's going on here? So I can't really blame anyone for being a little bit confused about this, um, but uh, Kim was actually asked about this specific Thing. Famitsu asks, could you tell us why you decided to make even Lily young in age? And Kim mentioned, it's not particularly young in age, Asians tend to look younger than their actual age around the world, so we took that into consideration when designing her. All characters in Stellar Blade are adults, so she may be older than you might imagine. And this is a very true statement, like the genes within Asian ethnicity tend to make them look a lot younger than they actually are. So I'm happy that Kim has actually clarified this, all characters are adults. And when talking about the age topic, Fumitsu are curious to know if we end up learning about the ages of the characters as we progress through the game. Uh, these translations are a little bit sticky, but essentially Kim mentioned that perhaps the age thing will become clear if there is a sequel. He mentions that if you want to know the age of these characters, play Stella Blade, Love it, and you'll find the answer out in the next game. You know what this means, folks. Buy Stellar Blade. Obviously, though, if a game or form of media ends up performing incredibly well, then that then warrants a sequel. Right now, for Stellar Blade, it has a mass, mass amount of traction and popularity for a game that is a fresh, brand new IP. Right now, it is the most pre-ordered game on the PlayStation Store. Obviously, PlayStation ended up picking this game up for it to be exclusively released on PS5, so they in themselves saw potential within the project. And from what we've already seen and experienced of Stellar Blade so far, we already know that this is a quality product, so I have no doubt in my mind that there will in fact be a Stellar Blade 2. Just quickly talking about Shift Up's future endeavors, they've already announced recruitment for their next game, which is apparently going to be a AAA urban sci-fi action RPG, which will be cross-platform for PC, mobile, and consoles. We're led to believe that this is separate from that of Stellar Blade, so it seems like if there is going to be a Stellar Blade 2, there will be another project that will release between the release of Stellar Blade and its sequel. Talking about the Natiba, the alien enemies of Stellar Blade, which personally I love all of the designs that I've seen of this enemy so far. I think Shift Up have done a great job of making them look completely grotesque and very distinct distinct. But Famitsu said, after playing the trial version, I looked at the clay figurine in the office again and noticed that the stalker had a woman's face on his abdomen. Are such hidden elements built into each Nativa? I personally didn't notice this, so I went back to the gameplay of the stalker and yeah, right there on his tummy is an upside down woman's face. Same with the Juggernaut boss too, it's got multiple golden human faces uh, around its head. Tim mentions that there are many different hidden elements among the other Nativas, so we hope you will discover them for yourself as you play. I'm assuming the story of Stellar Blade will tell us a bit about the Natibas, where they may have originated from, 
what they exactly are. They seem to be an alien species of some kind, but I do wonder that over time, maybe some of the Nativa have ended up morphing different human features physically to sort of uh, represent that takeover of humanity. As seen in the new footage, uh, we know that some of the Nativa actually use human bodies as hosts. So maybe some of the different enemies that we come across are just completely grotesque, deformed versions of what was once a human being. And the final thing right here is photo mode. Uh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people are curious about this. Would probably have to be like request number one at this point, you know, yeah, for reasons and stuff like that. But Famitsu asked, I personally would like a photo mode. Oh, we know you would, Famitsu. Are there any plans to implement such a mode? Right now, I'm focusing on the development of the main game, so I haven't prepared a photo mode yet. If there are requests from users, I'd like to answer them as much as possible. So it seems like if people want it, it'll likely happen. Shift up, know that people want a photo mode. This is them just beating around the bush. Uh, it wouldn't even surprise me if like they end up charging for this because you know damn well people would pay for it. No, but Shift Up have mentioned that they will be supplying free updates and free DLC. No doubt that a photo mode will come in the form of an eventual free update. So guys, that's everything you need to know about Cellar Blade for the time being. Again, we're not too far away from release, so exciting times ahead. I simply cannot wait. However, dudes, thank you so much for tuning on and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps me out and helps you out if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on. Check out my other social media platforms. Thanks a bunch to my turkey-tastic patrons. You guys are epic. I'm Cynical. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day, and we'll talk real soon.